everyone. Uh, thank you for joining the webinar on uh, finance today. I'm Prapi from Nokri Learning. We at Nokri Learning are creating a one-stop solution that fulfills the career progression goals of a working professional like you to industry-oriented certifications and courses. Today for this webinar, we have Dr. Abhijit Padnis with us. Uh, Abhijit, uh, over to you. Please introduce yourself and the topic that we would cover. Yeah, thank you very much, Prapti. Uh, good evening, guys. Uh, it's wonderful to uh, have a conversation with you over the next one hour. Uh, I'm, of course, going to introduce myself, uh, and uh, very soon I will do that. Uh, you know, basically, my corporate career began in 1983-84, soon after I qualified as a char chartered accountant and as a cost accountant. And later on, I also qualified as a company secretary, then as a CFA. Uh, and uh, about six years ago, I also completed my PhD from IIT Bombay. Uh, well, I have also been working uh, since 1983. I began my career with a company called Johnson & Johnson, then moved to Grinley's. Uh, and then later on, I was uh, on the board of the local subsidiaries of two Swiss banks. One is called as UBS, and the second one is Credit Suisse. Uh, but all along, I have always been teaching, uh, except five, six hectic years in between. But uh, my teaching career also began in 1985. So practically, I've been teaching for the last uh, 31 years. Um, and uh, I, of course, have taught a variety of courses. But very importantly, I made a shift uh, from teaching students to engaging executives about two decades ago. So that's how I have uh, delivered more than uh, 300 odd corporate programs for more than 50 companies. Um, so that's how uh, I have a good pulse of you know what it takes for people to learn this subject, and uh, therefore it's very interesting and engaging uh, you know to have a conversation with you. So I'm going to progress uh, in terms of uh, uh, the the content. And uh, the basic question that comes to my mind, and of course it must be in your mind too, is why people like you uh, should learn accounting and finance. Now before I go to this question, uh, I just want to have one question and I would like to have a response from you. Uh, how many of you come from a non-accounting or non-finance background? So just kindly send uh, you know your responses through the chat window. I would just like to quickly monitor that. Uh, just for me to get a feel of people who are already uh, in the conversation, uh, that would really be helpful. So kindly uh, give a response to my question. Uh, how many of you come from a non-accounting or non-finance background, please? Could you please share uh, your response to the chat window? Oh, so uh, can I assume that everybody comes from an accounting and finance background? That's, that's really interesting. Uh, but anyway, uh, let me move forward. So to this question of uh, why should one, uh, one learn the language of accounting and finance? Uh, I would simply say that uh, finance is the language of business. So anybody who is in the commercial world, either uh, an entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur, a startup, somebody who is working for the corporates, uh, all need to understand this language. Now, of course, uh, uh, sometimes people have some worries about learning this language and I'll deal with those issues as we go along. But uh, suffice to say here that uh, finance is the language and uh, particularly what happens is that as people start growing in the organization, when they, uh, some of you may have perhaps uh, begun your journey in operations, some of you may have begun your journey in sales, marketing, supply chain, HR, uh, you know, information technology, uh, but as you grow, uh, there is a major shift which starts happening to anybody's career. So typically when people are recruited, uh, they are recruited for their specialized skills. So somebody who comes from uh, a mechanical engineering background is recruited because uh, he or she knows uh, that domain extremely well. Uh, however, as that person starts growing in the organization, uh, 
uh, or as that person starts building a business, there are some major shifts that start happening to his or her role. And the major shift is that uh, essentially when the person uh, begins applying uh, those specific skills, most of the time which is demanded of him or her is uh, specifically those skills, specifically that piece of knowledge. But as one starts growing, uh, typically the requirement to apply that knowledge starts going down because uh, there are a few people who start working under you. Uh, they become a part of your team and you can start delegating some of your responsibilities uh, to them and obviously they start discharging those roles that you were discharging uh, previously. Um, but as you move up, uh, there are a new set of expectations which start coming up. Uh, and typically those expectations are that you know uh, you are able to lead a team of people. Uh, you may be great uh, doing your job by yourself, but you need to lead a team and you should be able to show those skills as well. Uh, your ability to uh, think more strategically uh, becomes very, very important. Uh, your ability to uh, speak the language of uh, senior leaders becomes very important. And that's where finance becomes very, very relevant because as people go to the uh, top or even to uh, a senior role, uh, a little uh, above the middle management role, a lot of discussions actually weave around either financial conversations, they're either talking about strategy or they're talking about the customer or they're talking about the people. And therefore, as you grow in, in the corporate world, you need to be familiar with those conversations. And one of the most important conversations is going to be finance itself. So unless you are well equipped to learn that language, uh, it becomes a little diff difficult to grow further because typically people get pulled up into the higher levels if uh, those people are comfortable with some of the issues that I have just highlighted. So those issues including, as I said, being able to lead uh, a business strategically, uh, great understanding of the customer, people skills, and awareness about commercial sides of business, particularly finance, become very, very important. So uh, you need to prepare yourself to be in those senior roles and realize this major shift which happens uh, in your own careers. Quite often this shift is not very uh, noticed, but it keeps on happening. And uh, earlier you are aware about these shifts, uh, better you would be prepared for those more senior roles and you will do uh, much better. Now, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, there are some worries when it comes to accounting and finance and particularly often it is thought that uh, learning finance or learning account is extremely uh, complicated. Now, how many of you really think so that learning accounting and finance is very complex? Can I have a response uh, from the people on the webinar in terms of what's your reaction about uh, learning accounting and finance? Uh, is there a mind block on this subject? Do you think it's very easy? What's your reaction, please? Okay, uh, I think I've still not received any response, uh, but anyway, I move on. Uh, having engaged uh, executives uh, for more than two decades and students over uh, uh, 30 years, uh, I feel that quite often people who come from, uh, uh, you know, uh, specializations other than accounting and finance uh, think that this subject is a little more complicated. Uh, even people at senior levels of corporations quite often have this as a mind block. Uh, and perhaps the reason why this uh, topic is thought to be complicated is because the subject is presented to them in a way perhaps which is not very palatable. Uh, it Sometimes the conversations look complex, but my submission here is that uh, they're not really so complex. I mean, if you just go to the fundamentals, they're extremely simple and straightforward. And the really the crux of the issue is that how is this subject taught? If somebody uh, chooses to teach this subject in a complicated way, obviously, it may look very complicated, but uh, it is really the knack of the presenter in terms of how simplified it is. Um, and uh, quite often I draw a parallel of this subject with languages. Um, just to give you a, a simile, uh, you know, there are broadly two ways of learning a language. 
one way of learning the language is through the grammar route. You can actually learn language by understanding the grammar. Uh, the other way of learning a language is through a conversation. And uh, I hope you would agree with me that learning a language through grammar is much more complicated than learning to speak a language. So quite often uh, accounting and finance looks complicated because uh, the, the way trainers and teachers teach this uh, subject is like the way grammar is taught rather than helping people to converse in this language. But the moment uh, you start conversing in this, uh, uh, you know, in these concepts, you will actually find that uh, they are very, very simple, they are very straightforward, extremely logical uh, and therefore, and not only that, they are also very enjoyable. So, uh, so therefore it's the question of just how it is presented. And therefore uh, we will see as we go along that it can really be uh, simplified and therefore the question which I just raised is that uh, can we learn accounting and finance like a language uh, through a conversation? Uh, now quite often it is not taught this way, it is quite often taught very mechanically uh, by uh, giving a lot of process details but without giving the big picture of uh, a business understanding. And uh, imagine if this subject is taught through a conversation, uh, uh, it actually uh, becomes even more interesting and much more uh, easy to understand. So uh, essentially, uh, therefore, uh, the conclusion of the conversation is that if you just uh, present this product in a way which is uh, simplified, uh, it is more business-like, uh, it is more uh, real life, then you will find that uh, it's much easier to understand uh, this topic. So as I was just mentioning, the name of the game is uh, simplicity and interaction. Uh, if the concepts are simplified uh, and they're interactive, they actually become much more easier to understand, uh, you know, much more simpler to digest and you can obviously retain them uh, for a much longer time. Now I'm just going back to where we began. Uh, we are not here to learn uh, accounting and finance just for the heck of it. We are actually saying that learning accounting and finance is extremely crucial for one's own personal growth. Uh, personal growth uh, in terms of one's own business or profession. Personal growth in terms of in, even being able to handle one's own personal finances better. Uh, because uh, when I interact with executives, uh, I find that people who are at very senior levels also don't manage their own personal finance as well. You know, so it's very, very important that you get hold of this topic in a way that helps you and your family because financial freedom is something that really is empowering. It actually gives you much more options to explore in your, in your life, in your professions. Uh, you know, so once you take control of your own finances as well, uh, you will find that uh, your life becomes less complicated. You are much better in control of your life from uh, the perspective of uh, choosing different paths. So that's why uh, I'm just reiterating this fact that uh, this whole topic of simplifying accounting, simplifying finance must be uh, seen in the context of the utility of it. The utility is that this subject is actually going to be really helpful throughout one's life. So uh, I thought of just reiterating that point because we should not lose the uh, context in which we are having this conversation. Uh, so going forward, uh, so we thought, uh, you know, we'll also share with you uh, this interesting product that we have created, uh, which is uh, amazingly simple, uh, interactive and engaging. So let me just uh, tell you a bit about the genesis of the product. Uh, we actually uh, were working on uh, a kind of e-learning for a very large group. This was in 2011, about five years ago. And uh, this entire e-learning rollout was through uh, PowerPoint presentations, extremely simplified. Uh, you know, so it actually gave a lot of value. Uh, thousands of people in that group actually participated around the world uh, and it was appreciated. But uh, when I started thinking a little more about it, I said, uh, hey, the uh, whole topic was simplified, agreed. Uh, the whole topic was made interesting through real life examples, through games, agreed. But we missed one very important thing, which was conversation. And, uh, uh, you know, so uh, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, this idea of uh, teaching accounting, costing and finance, which are seemingly complicated topics like a language, 
uh, dawned in my mind uh, by God's grace and I said, why not uh, give uh, it a reality? And that's how uh, we said, you know, how do we actually uh, give an understanding of uh, these topics? Can we do it through a story? Uh, the answer was probably yes. But the problem with the story is that it can be extremely unwieldy because story can go on and on. Uh, they can become like the sitcoms which never end, right? Uh, instead, if you actually do it through a very compact serial which is focused, uh, which uh, has uh, straight takeaways, which is very, very real life like, but at the same time it is not unwieldy, then perhaps it could serve the purpose. So that's how uh, I thought of writing the serial and then we created this uh, product which weaves around the story of an entrepreneur and of course I'm going to share some glimpses, glimpses of the story as we go along. But uh, essentially the idea was that the uh, format of a serial which is like a mini story can be used uh, for creating interactions. Uh, interactions within the story, interactions between the learner and uh, you know uh, what is being unfolded as a part of learning. So therefore, uh, you know, uh, it turned out to be amazingly simple and engaging. So uh, it has only been rolled out in some companies and including uh, one very reputed uh, management institution which has rolled it out for its students who actually don't have, uh, uh, you know, any accounting background. So it has uh, really been uh, received well. But uh, what are the features of uh, this kind of a uh, product? The features uh, actually include as I mentioned earlier that it is basically a very business-like story um, and it is not just a story which is abstract but uh, time and again real life data is also shared. Uh, for example, while I've been talking about accounting and finance as the theme, I should not forget to mention that even cost related concepts which have become very, very vital in today's competitive world have also been uh, touched upon. So. Uh, when it comes to cost data, it has to be very real life. Uh, there are real life challenges such as uh, sometimes we read in the papers that uh, manufacturers of one country go and dump into another country and we find that there is a huge implication on the manufacturers of the other country where the products are being dumped. So, uh, you know, why are they able to, uh, why are they able to dump products? What is the costing principle that they are using to be able to dump those products? Uh, what may have gone right or wrong with the costing of the products in the country in which these products have been uh, imported and dumped. So these are real life issues and uh, while the conversations have the advantage of making them simple, uh, you at times must also be able to see real data and that real data has also been woven as a part of the story. Uh, how are products costed? Uh, how uh, you know, in spite of the best of systems to cause the products, what kind of defects can unnoticedly, uh, un unnoticingly go into the costing process and therefore how they can vitiate business decisions are all uh, have been, uh, you know, incorporated as a part of the conversation. So here I must also mention that uh, considering that these concepts of accounting, costing and finance are, you know, uh, extremely wide and uh, deep. Uh, Considering that this product is actually pitched for people who come from non-accounting and non-finance background and uh, therefore uh, either are leading businesses or uh, aspiring to go and lead businesses, grow in their careers or want to be entrepreneurs or already entrepreneurs, uh, we didn't want to make it so unwieldy that actually people don't get a focused learning. So while the concepts are extremely vast, uh, to make them, uh, you know, very, very useful in day-to-day -day, uh, life as well as for business decisions. Uh, we have made them very compact and therefore the cream of learning has been shared rather than getting into, you know, unnecessary details. So just to give you an idea, you know, uh, quite often when people talk about accounting, there are two key words which are often used. One is called as debit and another is called as credit and the whole accounting process is actually woven around debit and credit. Now, debit and credit as two words are extremely useful for accountants, but this product actually is meant for people who don't have an understanding of accounting, but at the same time, they want to master this subject in a way which is very non-accounting, and therefore, in this story, we have stayed away from using those two words of debit and credit, 
and we have used uh, logic to unfold the whole accounting learning. Uh, and as we will, uh, you know, talk about it a little later in terms of features of the product and what are the contents, I will share some of those features down the line. But I thought of just mentioning this that this product, uh, which takes approximately 20 hours of learning, uh, is focused on all the important learnings that anybody who uses accounting and finance concepts must have without getting into the unnecessary detail which is not relevant to business managers. So uh, that is how uh, I would put it. Uh, the product is extremely nice to go through because it has rich background and animation. Uh, it has uh, test your metal, uh, you know, in every episode. So you have an opportunity to actually revise the concepts that you have learned. It also has an interesting uh, insertion of what we call as guru speak. Uh, guru in our tradition is somebody uh, from whom we learn. Um, so while uh, the conversations, there is no guru involved, there are uh, real characters who are conversing, uh, but there is somebody who comes comes in at the end of every episode just to give you some other perspectives on this subject and uh, that is there in every episode uh, except one or two where they are purely games but otherwise uh, there is somebody who comes in as a guru and who shares with you uh, you know uh, basically uh, just to uh, just to give you a flavor of that subject a little more and maybe sometimes a little different perspectives than may have been covered in the animation so uh, so there is also a guru speak and uh, in between there are some games that you can play uh, basically to refresh some of the concepts uh, and uh, therefore as you start going through the the whole uh, product there is a formal assessment also um, you know after a certain number of episodes you go through a formal assessment which has multiple level uh, multiple answers uh, uh, questions and you have to choose the right one and uh, of course, uh, in case, even in the test your metal, in case uh, you go wrong, there is a prompt which tells you uh, where you have gone wrong and what is the correct perspective uh, to that answer, to that question. So that uh, that also acts as a uh, kind of a reinforcement to the learning. Uh, there is a certification possible uh, after you complete each of those modules. Now, since I'm talking about modules, let me just give you a flavor of those modules. Uh, there are three modules in the entire product. One is an accounting module, second is a costing module, and third is a finance module. The accounting module has 25 episodes, the costing module has 12 episodes, and the finance module has 12 episodes. The accounting module uh, episodes are relatively shorter. The costing and finance module uh, episodes are relatively longer, and therefore in costing and finance modules, we have also given a break in between just for you to uh, refresh and then move forward. But in any case, uh, we have used the adult learning principles and ensured that the, none of the episodes is too long for you to, uh, you know, uh, easily understand it. Uh, and also, we are very, very keen that it's not just a question of learning and understanding, but you enjoy the learning. That's the very important piece. And therefore, we have been uh, very, very clear about this concept that we don't want to stretch an episode uh, and therefore they have been uh, carved out in such a way that you are able to continuously engage with that learning. There is also a progress card which is built in which will actually help you to monitor your own progress in how many episodes you already completed, how well did you do in the test your metal, how well have you done in the assessment. So uh, that's a personalized progress card that you can also benefit from. Uh, Another very, very important uh, addition as a part of the product is the glossary. So as you are going through the product, uh, you may sometimes may like to uh, pause and uh, get into a little more detail about that concept. Uh, so there is a glossary available. You can just click, uh, you know, the alphabetical glossary and you can go to uh, that particular uh, subject and have a little more understanding of that subject. By the way, uh, as those episodes are unfolding, uh, you don't have to necessarily go through those episodes, uh, you know, whether you have understood a particular concept or a conversation or not, you can just stop wherever you want. Uh, you can go back and refresh uh, your learning also, uh, so that, you know, you feel comfortable and confident that the entire conversation you are on top of, 
so that uh, the real objective of learning, which is that you benefit from it, is always kept in mind. And at times, uh, you may feel like uh, even taking notes, uh, there is a uh, availability of that feature also that you can make your own notes and those notes are preserved, uh, you know, so when you go back to that episode once again, you are able to see your own notes and pointers, uh, uh, you know, so that uh, that's also possible. You can stop any time, refresh it any time. So that feature is also there. Also there, And glossary, as I mentioned earlier, helps you to refresh uh, a lot of uh, the conceptual uh, learning that you had already gone through. Uh, I think this is a point I've already made uh, and I will not repeat it, but you have an opportunity for revising the episodes again, not only at the time that you're going through an episode, but later on, just imagine you're going for a very, very important meeting where some uh, discussion is going to happen around budgeting and uh, you need to be clear about some of the budgeting concepts. Uh, let's say you're leading a team of people and uh, you want to lead a discussion around budget for your own function. What is what are the key takeaways of that episode? You just want to refresh. So just go to the budgeting module, uh, refresh that, uh, and go for the meeting. That's very empowering. So uh, this is one great advantage of e-learning if delivered well, uh, that you have an opportunity to refresh it again. Unlike uh, in a what happens in a classroom, uh, the classroom you go through the learning, but unless it's recorded and uh, that recording is accessible to you. Uh, the whole learning has a potential or risk of fading, whereas here you have the great advantage of revising and revisiting it again, um, and you can do it in a very focused way based on what you exactly need uh, for a particular meeting, etc. So this is a great advantage uh, from that perspective. Uh, also, because it sits on top of a learning management system, uh, you have the flexibility of viewing it from anywhere. Uh, and therefore, uh, you're not restricted to necessarily see it uh, only from either your office or see it from your home. You have Uh, another advantage. It's a very, very cost effective way of learning uh, because uh, I'm not just saying it from the cost of the license perspective, but more importantly, in terms of using your time more fruitfully. Uh, say, for example, uh, if you were to go through the entire learning which this product provides, having done so many workshops for a huge number of companies, I can confidently say that what typically would be covered in about four to five days of learning uh, in a workshop format is offered to you in about 20 to 21 hours of learning and at your own flexible time. So you want to devote two hours for learning in a week, you can devote two hours for learning in a week and you can build that continue continuity. In fact, uh, as a uh, way of our recommended uh, way of learning, we have said that you know devote about half an hour a day uh, but you know, in case you are not able to do it, you can do it alternate day, uh, that's fine, but you get control of your own learning and uh, you can pace your learning uh, in, a way, uh, in a way that you are comfortable and that's why I'm also saying that it's very cost effective because to take out time from work, uh, be away from work for five days uh, is extremely expensive. So I'm not saying from the perspective of the cost of going into a workshop but rather being away from work itself has a huge cost. And therefore, uh, you know, uh, the product actually offers to you in a way that uh, you can uh, self-pace it. And uh, that's why I'm saying that it's very, very cost effective. Just to give you some idea about the content that the product uh, offers to you. Um, so the episode one actually, uh, you know, is the uh, story of Vijay's discovery and uh, the storyline introduction itself. And uh, as we go forward, 
there is a discovery that Vijay has made and he obviously wants to create a business around his discovery. And that's how the conversations begin. There are conversations even around as simple concepts as the significance of money itself. Quite often, um, while money is a man-made invention, we have taken it for granted. We don't even think about what money really is. Uh, but we have, right from the basics of what is money and why money is important, uh, how do we actually use different types of resources in a business, how those resources actually can be classified, and uh, how uh, you know the whole finance learning uh, can be woven around a simple understanding of the resources that are required for a business and the different sources of money which are, which are required for financing acquisition of resources. So quite often, uh, you know, because of some, uh, maybe because of our conversations with people who are not fully aware about the topic, there are uh, misconceptions which are developed around concepts like the word liability. And the moment anybody utters this word of a liability, we always take it very, very negatively. But I, I always say this, that uh, if a business were not to create liability, in other words, a business were not to raise money from others, perhaps the business is limiting its own growth. Uh, and therefore, uh, the simple word like liability can be looked at very positively. Even in our own personal life, if we were not to take uh, loans, let's say, for example, buying a house or buying a car, uh, we are, in fact, restricting our ability to acquire assets. The fact that we are able to buy a property uh, by taking a housing loan means that the loan, which in accounting parlance is called as a liability, has a very constructive use in our life. The important piece is that we use liabilities you know, with care, with caution. Uh, when to create those liabilities, when not to create those liabilities is very, very important. And we need to understand uh, that. So uh, again, similarly, uh, the liability assets, and in fact, I must mention uh, this here, that uh, I always say this, that learning accounting is simple if you understand only six concepts in accounting. Which are those six concepts? Uh, the concept of a liability, the concept of an asset, the concept of an income, the concept of an expense, the concept of inflow, and the concept of outflow. If anybody understands these six concepts, uh, you know, it's very, very easy to build uh, accounting, uh, accounting knowledge. And in fact, uh, can you believe this, that just by going through this product over a period of just six or seven hours, uh, the product takes you to a level where you are able to logically construct the financial statements, which seemingly uh, look very complicated. When people think of a, a concept of a balance sheet or the concept of profit and loss statement or a cash flow statement, people always say, oh, I don't understand what these concepts are. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, right in the beginning, uh, if you want to be a leader of a business, whether it's your own or whether you're leading a corporate business, either way, you need to be very familiar with uh, financial statements because you are going to be one of the beneficiaries of this data and this data you must be able to understand. Now, uh, uh, what this product does is that through a very, very simple logical flow, step-by-step -step, uh, you know, progression, uh, in just seven, seven and a half hours, you actually go to uh, a stage where uh, you are able to construct those financial statements yourself by using simple logic. No debit, no credit, no journal, ledgers, trial balance, and all the paraphernalia that accountants use. Because I'm just going back to our conversation that we had initially. Uh, the idea is that you, as a recipient of accounting and finance information, should be able to interpret it well, rather than you know worry about how the data is constructed. We can leave that to the accountants. But as business leaders, we need to be familiar with how is this, this data useful to us, and how uh, you know uh, we should interpret it. That's the very important piece. So uh, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, a lot of seemingly complex concepts, including concepts such as depreciation, concepts such as taxes and deferred taxes, all have been uh, simplified here. Uh, the, uh, as I mentioned here, those six concepts have been put in front of you in a beautiful framework. Uh, you get to see the interrelationships of these six concepts, which are the building blocks of accounting. 
And once you, once you understand those interrelationships, understanding those financial statements is just the next logical step. Because actually, uh, I would say it like this, that balance sheet is essentially a statement which captures assets and liabilities. Cash flow statement captures inflows and outflows. And uh, the statement of profit and loss captures income and expenses. So uh, if you understand the logic and how they are interrelated, uh, actually it's not very, very difficult to uh, understand uh, you know, the financial statements at all. And quite often in some of the uh, finance workshops, uh, you know, people are taught how to interpret those financial statements. But what happens is one very important building block is missed out. And that building block is how do they actually come together as three statements. So I'm not able to interpret them well because I don't know how they have come about in the first place. So to address this major issue, we have created a very interesting game. As you can see on this slide, there is this uh, episode 25, which is a game called as Account of SAR, where the idea is that through a game, you actually build those two financial statements, those three financial statements. And uh, you can see here that there is an episode 24, which acts as a preparatory episode uh, before you go into the game. The game has all the support uh, which you can think of, including pointing out to you what went wrong uh, when you classified some data. Uh, so you, you are aware and you learn even at that stage. Uh, and the advantage is the great satisfaction of having completed financial statements. Uh, and as quite often the accountants who go through these exams always uh, get excited when they are able to tally a balance sheet, so to say. You're going to get the same excitement when you go through this game of putting all those two, all those three statements together and you tally your balance sheet. And there you really see why the, the term balance sheet is used as such. Why is it called as the balance sheet and not an, not an unbalanced sheet? Because it balances, it actually balances the assets and liabilities. Uh, so you actually get to experience how uh, using logic the balance emerges. So that's the interesting part. So friends, uh, this is the accounting episode which has, uh, or accounting module, I'm sorry, which has 25 episodes, which actually build uh, this understanding of uh, the uh, some of the accounting concepts and how they flow into the financial statements. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the other very, very important piece, which is uh, extremely critical, is the cost issue. Because for businesses, uh, cost is a very, very important uh, aspect of ensuring a profitable growth. Uh, so uh, the episodes in costing are woven around some very interesting uh, ideas, including uh, how cost is to be looked at, how cost is a consumption of resources, how cost can be classified. What is the concept of cost centers around which the entire costing process of products and services is woven? Uh, this is one very interesting episode, uh, episode 5, which is about activity-based costing. Uh, activity-based costing is a seemingly complex uh, topic. Uh, in fact, workshops can be done uh, over days on this, uh, you know, uh, this concept itself. But uh, what we have done in this uh, story is that what is the learning which uh, can be taken away through this uh, activity-based costing principle. And one of the interesting findings that companies have had globally uh, after they uh, implemented very, you know, uh, complex costing processes is that uh, they often found that when it came to their large volume products, you know, which were consumed by a big uh, number of consumers. They were not priced as high as their premium products. But quite often they found that there were other manufacturers who came and underpriced them in the marketplace. And uh, that's where activity-based costing uh, gives an insight because what activity-based costing actually shares with you is that your pricing decisions, if they are based on wrong costing data, can actually uh, create disaster in the marketplace. So you may have a seemingly complex costing system, but what are the key assumptions that have been built into the costing process? Unless they are uh, you know, carefully looked at, what could actually happen is that take decisions on the wrong data, and you may actually find that somebody who is only manufacturing 
those low end products is actually coming coming into the marketplace and uh, pricing uh, the products at a level that you can't imagine because your cost is very high then companies go around and give a justification that because we are a large company our our overheads are high but uh, the problem is actually how the overheads are charged rather than overheads being high per se and that is where equity based costing provides an insight so what we have done here is that instead of going into all the details of the activity based costing process the interesting insights have been shared so that actually you can start using them in the business uh, and your decision making actually improves then there are other concepts there's fixed and variable costs marginal cost uh, own uh, statement of profit and loss in a different way by uh, looking at your cost structure what are variable costs what are, what are fixed costs how you can use your entire uh, uh, statement of profit and loss to be presented in a way what in the episode 8 has been called as the contribution income statement and that again provides some phenomenal uh, insight you know you should be aware as a decision maker about the break even point of your business what is the minimum level of uh, or minimum level of sales and manufacturing that you must achieve uh, what are the important principles uh, which are vital in managing costs? Quite often, uh, cost management is looked at in a very, very restricted way. People only think of cost cutting ideas, but cost goes beyond that. Uh, cost cutting is the starting point, but cost reduction is a fundamental way of reducing your cost base. Is very important. Uh, I mention here that the way a budgeting system runs in the organizations, quite often uh, it is extremely dominated uh, through a process rather than a budgeting system being used as a communication device. But my own experience uh, having worked in the corporate world is that if uh, budgeting can be used as a communication device uh, to get people involved, to share with them the concerns around the business, people can actually lobby together uh, and help the business to grow. So how budgeting can also be used as a communication device is something which has been shared as a part of uh, you know, uh, this episode uh, 11. So I'm sure you will uh, have a different perspective to budgeting when you look at it. Uh, coming to the last uh, module which is finance, there are of course a lot of concepts that we hear. Uh, when we go to bankers, bankers analyze our financial statements. We must also be equipped to analyze our own financial statements. We should be able to apply analytical tools and see what kind of insights uh, obtained by that analysis. As I mentioned earlier, uh, constructing financial statements is a starting point. But to be able to get better insights into data, if, if you are able to also analyze the financial data by applying certain tools, uh, that's wonderful. So uh, here we have given you uh, certain insights in terms of how a technique called a ratio analysis can be used, uh, how those ratios can be calculated, how data across financial statements can be culled together so easily for you to understand ratios uh, that has been shared in these first three episodes. There are other concepts which are also very, very important. Working capital in um, quite often uh, money is likened likened to just like blood is flowing through so we should to have just amount of the finance must also move through the business cycles uh, that is called as working capital management uh, we also manage our risks well. Uh, we get into a lot of details about costs. We try and micromanage our costs. But one major risk can actually floor the whole business. We have seen examples of this around the world. How one major episode actually closed a company which was 125 years old or which had a long history. But because they didn't manage the risk well, uh, the, uh, the business suffered. So some glimpse into risk management. Uh, when we expand our business, how to use what to finance, what are the different sources of finance, equity, debt, when to use uh, equity, when not to use equity, when to use debt, when not to use debt. 
quite often we see uh, particularly in last couple of years that some businesses some companies have uh, you know gone through a turmoil because they underwent expansion at a wrong time uh, there was an airline which was called as a flying bank uh, it was it came from a very rich uh, country but the airline exploded uh, because they undertook expansion uh, in such a rapid way they actually raised money by way of borrowings and when there was a downturn in travel industry they suffered uh, and the airline had to be closed it was actually a flag uh, of or rather a carrier a national flag carrier of a particular country but it blew up because they expanded uh, at a wrong time uh, they raised a lot of borrowings at a wrong time so when should we raise uh, money by way of borrowings and when we should not raise money by way of borrowings is a very important decision in corporate and business life we also seen examples of this in india in last couple of years we all hear about you know how uh, the loans which banks have given have gone bad and how some of the businesses have suffered so we also need to cost of financing and that's what talks about cost of debt financing cost of equity financing uh, then very interesting topic of uh, the time value of money quite often we take housing loans we take car loans the bank tells us about the EMI we take that EMI for granted we don't know how that EMI has been calculated we don't care to uh, know about it but once we are familiar with the concept of time value of money uh, there are some very very interesting applications of time value of money uh, we can actually uh, become better investors because quite often insurance products are sold as investments to us we don't even know what is the return on that investment but we go for an insurance policy uh, so as I mentioned right at the beginning of our conversation, a product like this is not only useful in business decision making, but is extremely empowering when it comes to personal finances also. So uh, whether it is investing in projects, uh, whether it is investing in uh, you know different facets which are available at an individual level, we must have different tools of analysis. And in fact, the last episode of the entire uh, module as well as the entire series is the tools of analysis such as internal rate of return, net present value, these are often talked about in the corporate world and we need to be familiar with those uh, concepts and those same concepts are also useful in our own personal decision making. So uh, thought we could also include this uh, as a part of uh, the entire product and uh, you know there are very interesting testimonials which uh, have come about this product. Um, the, the simplicity in which uh, this product has been unfolded. It's very interesting that the gentleman who has given the testimonial in the middle, who was the first Indian CFO to receive the CFO Asia Award, uh, Mr. Deepak Daisas, uh, who is himself now an entrepreneur, and he was the former uh, CEO of India and global CFO of uh, iFlex Solutions, which later on became Oracle Financial Services uh, India, um, interestingly says that this product is useful not only for people who come from non-accounting and non-finance background, but he says that even finance guys will find uh, a value in terms of how this product is presented because it gives very different perspectives in terms of uh, how to look at the same uh, topic. And uh, gentleman Mr. Vivek Patwardhan, who was the formerly VPHR of Asian Paints, has also commended in terms of uh, how a topic which is often feared has been simplified in a way. Uh, you know that we have tried to do here. As I mentioned earlier, uh, and just to repeat it for the benefit of people who join later, finance learning can be like learning a language. So uh, if you uh, put it in a way which is grammar-like, which is mechanical, it can be utterly boring. But uh, if you present it in a way which is interactive, uh, which is conversational, which is uh, real-like, uh, then it's uh, you know. I must also mention here that uh, one of the other advantages of this, uh, the entire uh, curriculum, is that it not only gives you an understanding of account costing and finance concepts, but more importantly, it also raises your uh, business acumen. So, because the whole business setting, business, right from the sources of financing to when take and when not to take uh, you know financing from private equity investors uh, it gives you an awareness about 
a lot of business issues and uh, therefore you not only become uh, better uh, aware uh, in terms of the accounting and uh, costing and finance concepts but you also uh, you know become more uh, equipped in terms of taking decisions when it comes to your own business responsibilities so uh, we also hope and expect that as you go through this product you become more effective manager in the role that you are currently discharging and as you become more effective manager in the role that you are discharging as i mentioned earlier you prepare yourself for more senior roles just to reiterate uh, what uh, the the point that i made uh, in the beginning as you move up organization there is a fundamental shift which starts happening in your role your role earlier which was the specialist role gradually starts become, becoming that of a generalist and uh, one of the important facets of being a good generalist is a very strong business acumen as well as uh, a strong awareness about accounting and costing and finance concepts so as you uh, become more aware and in control and in charge of these concepts uh, one of the by products is that you become better decision maker uh, your own uh, you know role that you are able to discharge uh, better and uh, as you start aspiring to go into higher levels the reality is that you will get picked up if you are aware about the language which is used in the senior most levels uh, of the organization and that language is the language of finance so most of the board level conversations have a financial undertone of course not to undermine the importance of strategy or the customer or the employees themselves but in addition to those three uh, most of the conversations happen around the financial language and therefore by uh, becoming more equipped in this language we hope that you are able to uh, raise your own profile and make yourself eligible for further growth in the organizations that you grow for, uh, that you work for and we also hope that you are able to take decisions which are of the benefit for the organization um, so friends i am coming to uh, closer to the conclusion of uh, this presentation uh, but if you would like to know more about this product you can visit the website uh, http uh, learning.nokri.com or you can write to us uh, on e-learning at nokri.com or you can call us on 1800-103-4702 uh, to learn more about this product and how this product can help you in the growth uh, as a corporate executive uh, or an entrepreneur. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, what we just want to do is before we close, we just want to open a poll uh, in terms of uh, you know whether uh, you got value uh, from this uh, particular webinar that we just had and uh, also uh, whether you would like to explore a little more about the uh, product. So we'll just open a poll uh, in a moment and we we'll ask you to participate in the poll and give us your valuable, valuable insight. Thank you very much. Let me see. 
Uh, okay, friends, uh, thank you very much for participating in the webinar. We really appreciate you participating in the poll as well. Hope to see you uh, once again on another call. Thank you so much.